Thus far, we've applied Archimedes' principle to liquids, mainly water. The principle holds for fluids, which includes gases as well as liquids. The gas we're most familiar with is air. Archimedes' principle applied to air states, an object surrounded by air is buoyed up by a force equal to the weight of the air displaced. We know that a cubic meter of air at ordinary atmospheric pressure and room temperature has a mass of about 1.2 kilograms, so its weight is about 12 newtons. Therefore, any one cubic meter object in air is buoyed up with a force of 12 newtons. If the mass of the one cubic meter object is greater than 1.2 kilograms, which is to say has a weight greater than 12 newtons, it will fall to the ground when released. If it has a mass less than 1.2 kilograms, that's less than 12 newtons, it tends to rise in the air. An object having a weight less than the weight of an equal volume of air will rise in air. Another way to say this is that any object that has an average density less than the density of the air will rise in air. What can we say about gas-filled balloons that rise in air? That's right, their average density is less than the density of the surrounding air. Question. Is there an upward buoyant force on you right now? I hope your answer is yes. And do you know why it is that this force doesn't raise you into the air? Say like a helium-filled balloon when you release it, which rises to the ceiling? Because you're much heavier than the buoyant force, right? How much buoyant force affects something depends upon its weight. What's the purpose of the gas in a balloon? To supply pressure to the inner surface and keep it big while keeping its light to make it have a small average density. All gases have weight and a vacuum has zero weight. So what if a balloon were evacuated? It would collapse. Again, gas in a balloon keeps it from collapsing. In sport balloons, the gas is simply heated air. Gases other than heated air must be less dense than air. Heated air is less dense than cool air. If some gas other than heated air is used, that gas must also be less dense than air. The densities listed here are at sea level and zero degrees Celsius. Clearly, hydrogen is the least dense, but because it's flammable, it's seldom used. Helium is the gas of choice. How high will a helium-filled balloon rise? It will rise only as long as it displaces a weight of air greater than its own weight. Since air becomes thinner, less dense with altitude, a lesser weight of air is displaced per given volume as the balloon rises. The balloon expands, for the pressure inside the balloon pushes out against the lower pressure of the high-altitude air. That's why high-altitude research balloons at ground level are partially inflated. As the balloon rises, it becomes fully inflated as it expands against the thinner outside air. When the weight of displaced air equals the total weight of the balloon, Buoyant force on the balloon equals its weight, and the balloon no longer is moved upward. Equivalently, when the average density of the balloon, including its load, equals the density of the surrounding air, upward motion is no longer produced. Helium-filled toy balloons expand as they rise and eventually rupture when their balloon fabric is overstretched. Large dirigible or blimp airships don't rupture. They're designed to slowly rise in air when loaded, that is, their total weight when they lift off is a little less than the weight of air displaced. In addition to helium in these airships, there may be airbags that can be inflated and deflated to adjust for buoyancy. The airship's path through the air is controlled in part by horizontal elevators, as with an airplane. Here's a postage stamp commemorating these impressive airships. Thus far, we have treated pressure only as it applies to stationary fluids. Motion produces an additional influence. Next lesson. Let me leave you with a question. Upon which is buoyant force of the air greater? On an elephant or on a common helium-filled party balloon? Defend your answer. Until next time, good energy. Mm -hmm.